Welcome back. Now, talks on reviving a nuclear deal with Iran enter a critical phase in Vienna this week. The former U.S. President Donald Trump quit the deal in 2018, but President Biden has made reviving it a priority. Iran has so far refused to meet with U.S. officials directly, relying instead on mediators to shuttle between the two sides. Today, Tehran said it would only return to the deal if the U.S. removed all sanctions. That, it said, was a red line. Well, to talk more about that, we're joined by Trita Parsi, Executive Vice President at the Quincy Institute. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. Uh, so, Thank you for having me. So just yesterday, uh, Iran uh, welcomed that decision by the U.S. to restore a so-called sanctions waiver. It says, the U.S. says that that's part of the mechanism of the JCPOA. But critics say that this is just giving Iran the message that it's getting something for nothing. Isn't that a, a pretty weak negotiating position for Washington? I think that's a fundamental misunderstanding. What these sanctions did is something that the Trump administration put in place in order to essentially make it sanctionable for other countries to be involved in Iran's implementation of the JCPA. So, for instance, if it is about uh, getting some of the LEU, low enriched uranium, out of Iran, he essentially sanctioned other countries for participating in Iran living up to the agreement. For the Biden administration to lift those sanctions or waive those sanctions, it's a clear sign that the Biden administration wants to uh, uh, revive the agreement and is actually not giving the Iranians anything. It only opens up the pathway for the Iranians to do what they should be doing, which is to implement the GCPOA. Well, critics of the deal also say that there are concerns that uh, Iran uh, is hiding nuclear material. Uh, and just last year, Rafael Grossi, the IAEA chief, said uh, that he, quote, was deeply concerned that undeclared nuclear material may have been present uh, and such nuclear material remains unreported in Iran. So what is the sense in going ahead and lifting sanctions when there may be no limits on the advancement of the nuclear program? Well, it's just simply not true. If the sanctions are lifted and the Iranians live up to the agreement, then that's when we will actually have limits to the program. The absence of limits is a direct result of the Trump administration exiting the deal under pressure from Israeli Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu. Netanyahu took credit for having convinced Trump to uh, exit the agreement. And that's precisely why we have a crisis today and why the Iranians have far less restrictions on their nuclear program than they otherwise would have. So reviving the agreement and making sure that the give and take that came with that agreement, which is restrictions on the nuclear program in return for sanctions relief, is exactly the way of getting to those restrictions. Uh, even the US negotiator Rob Malley um, has warned that even if a deal is reached, um, Iran has made a lot of progress over the, the last couple of years, and its breakout time to a nuclear weapon um, is far shorter than it was in 2015. Israel estimates that could be uh, as little as six months. Uh, you know, is the U.S. just kind of leaving Israel and its allies to, to deal with this problem? Again, if the Israelis had not pushed the United States to get out of the agreement in the first place, we would not be in this dire situation. So I don't think from the Israeli perspective, there's much complaints uh, that are justified, mindful of the fact that much of this mess is a direct result of what the Israelis did, uh, both in pushing the U.S. to get out of the agreement, but also try to sabotage other ways of getting back into the agreement. Now, fortunately, the uh, Bennett government is uh, still claiming that it's opposed to the JCPA, but it's not engaged in the type of sabotage as the Netanyahu government was uh, engaged in. But when it comes to the specifics of the breakout, for instance, first of all, I think it's very important to understand breakout is not until the time measured until the Iranians will have a bomb. It's a measurement as to how long it will take for the Iranians to have the material necessary for a bomb. From that point, there's probably another two to three years before they even would have a bomb. So it is true that breakout to them having the material is lesser than it was before as a result of Trump pulling out. Uh, and even if the JCPA is revived, it will likely not be fully revived to the 12 months that it was originally. But that is still not saying that the Iranians are only six months away from a nuclear weapon in any way, shape or form. And again, we have to remind ourselves that part of the reason why there is a bit of a loss when it comes to uh, the breakout, just as much as there is a massive loss with Iranians when it comes to the sanctions relief, is precisely because the U.S. exited the deal in the first place. Do you believe Iran wants to build a nuclear weapon? 
I think the Iranians never had the intent of building a nuclear weapon. Uh, they had the intent of building all of the material for a bomb uh, because of the neighborhood they're in, the same neighborhood that Israel is in. But the political decision to build the bomb, according to Israeli intelligence, European intelligence, and American intelligence, had never been made. My hope is that that is what will remain the case. My fear is that if the JCPOA is not revived and there's an intensification of sanctions, uh, the balance inside of the Iranian government may shift towards those who are arguing, why not build the bomb? All the sanctions uh, that are on Iran essentially means that Iran is already paying the price for having a bomb without having a bomb. Uh and that would be a very, very negative development for the world as a whole. One of the reasons uh, President Trump gave uh, for pulling out of the deal um, was uh, Iran's uh, ballistic missiles program, but also its support for terrorist groups in the region, uh, such as uh, Hezbollah and others. Um, should Iran not face any consequences for its increasingly aggressive behavior in the region, the attacks on shipping, supplying the Houthis in Yemen with weapons, um, conducting attacks via proxies in Iraq? should the U.S. just disregard all of that and, and lift the sanctions anyway? Well, the U.S. is not disregarding any of those different things. But the agreement was a nuclear non-proliferation agreement. It was not just the U.S. deciding what it would entail. It was the other members of the P5 plus one. And the only issue that they could actually agree upon so that they could have a united P5 plus one vis-a-vis -vis Iran was on the nuclear file. When it comes to missiles and other issues, rest assured, there are plenty of perspectives on that. The United States itself is the greatest proliferator and, and, and seller of uh, weapons. But, but forgive, me, President, forgive me for interrupting, but President Biden said he would use this as an opportunity to get a, a tougher deal with Iran because he, he acknowledged that some of those things do need to be addressed. It looks as sure. though he's going into a, a deal that is possibly weaker than the 2015 deal. Well, first of all, yes, uh, Biden has said that he wants to address those issues. And I think it's unfair to say that they have not tried or that this is not on the agenda. But we first have to recognize that you have to judge the JCPA for what it was designed to uh, uh, achieve, not for the things that it explicitly was not designed to achieve. So, yes, it's not going to fix all of the problems, including climate change, but it did fix the non-proliferation issue, and that's why it's worth reviving. Now, when it comes to the American desire to have a longer, stronger deal, I think the administration has learned that without giving more, they're not going to be getting more. Uh, and as a result, any effort to do a longer and stronger deal will have to be done once the JCPA first is revived. Uh, Trying to get to that point prior to the revival is simply not possible. Uh, just briefly, the, the Biden administration is, is uh, clearly keen to reach a deal, and presumably Iran wants sanctions lifted uh, as well. Uh, so why is it taking so long, and why do the Iranians refuse to sit down and talk directly to the Americans? I think it's a huge mistake that the Iranians have uh, decided not to talk directly to the United States. I think a lot of time would be saved, and I think it would be much easier for the two sides to actually test each other's real red lines. It's very difficult to do so with a mediator in the middle. Uh, but part of the reason why it's taken a, a long time is because the Trump administration put together essentially a minefield field, uh, in order to make a revival of the JCPA as difficult as possible. They called it a sanctions wall. Uh, and negotiating exactly on how that will be done has been tricky. Another problem has been that the Iranians are seeking some sort of assurances that the United States will not once again pull out of the agreement and cheat. Uh, and because if not, uh, most countries or most players in this drama right now expect that the deal probably will not last much more than three years, that the next president of the United States, particularly if it's a Republican, uh, will pull out of the agreement. So all of those different things have created a much more complicated situation than it was before. Uh, and that's part of the reason why it's taken a long time. The other part is that the Iranians have refused to engage directly. Chita Party, we'll have to leave it there, but thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much for having me.